Hi there, my name's Andy Hillier, and today's video is gonna be my top five exercises for you to do every single day to help improve your playing and your technique. I'm gonna go through them all, but just before I do, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, give me a like on the video, press the notifications. I do love to hear from you, so please leave me some comments in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like some videos on, let me know where in the world you're from. And if you love what I'm doing, you wanna support me, support the channel, and you wanna print the tabs off for this, then I'll put them on my Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description. My guitar is in standard tuning. Okay, exercise number one, the first exercise. This is a classic, it's been done a million times, but just make sure you're doing it every day. I've been doing it since I started guitar lessons a long, long time ago, it really does help. Okay, and it's the classic one, two, three, four exercise. It goes like this. So on and so forth. Okay, all we're doing is using all four fingers. We're gonna start on E1, then E2 with your second finger, E3 with your third finger, then E4 with your little finger. Important to use all four fingers. We're trying to develop the strength and dexterity uh, control on all four fingers. And with your right hand, make sure you're going down, up, down, up. So we're developing two things. We're developing the left hand and the right hand at the same time. And probably the hardest thing to, to get to go play fast is getting the sync between the two hands. It's really easy to do the left hand quick. It's quite easy to do the right hand quick, but putting them together and syncing them up is the hard thing. So this is a really good exercise for that. So you play one, two, three, four, make sure you go down, up, down, up with the plectrum. And do the same thing on the next string, on the A string. And then you carry on all the way down. So we've got. When you get down to your little finger on E4, we then move all up a fret, up to the, what we call second position. This is first position, this is second position with all your fingers up one fret. And you're gonna go down five, four, three, two. Again, down, up, down, up. And then go onto the B string and do the same thing. And then keep working your way up. When you get down to E2, you're gonna move up a fret to E3, and we're gonna go down again. So we're gonna go E3, E4, E5, E6, making sure you're using fingers one, two, three, four, and then carry on down the strings. When we get to the bottom, we go up a fret and go back down. When we're at the top there, up a fret, and you get the idea, we do the whole neck, you just keep going. Practice it every day. Practice it with a metronome or an online drum machine. Something to um, keep tempo, but also something to judge yourself with. So you can start at say, I don't know, 60 beats per minute or 70 beats per minute and gradually get faster as over the days until you become stronger and, and quicker. Uh, and that will really help improve your speed. On to exercise two, and this is for developing your legato. The strength in your left hand, really. Okay, so the first exercise is gonna go like this. So we're gonna start on G5, hammer onto G6, pull off to G5, hammer back onto G6. So you go. And you're just gonna keep that going. There's not a definite length of time for these. Each one of these bars, you can do lots and lots of times around to uh, help build up the speed and the uh, uh, strength in your hand. You can do it really fast. It's good to practice it slow as well to get the accuracy. Into the next bar, we're doing the same thing, but I'm going fret five, hammering on to my third finger on fret seven. So we've got. So we had first and second fingers, first and third. Into the next bar, bar six, we're gonna go first finger to the little finger. Little finger's always gonna be the hardest one to use. It's gonna be the weakest finger, but you, you've gotta develop it, so. Mm -hmm. 
and spend a good couple of minutes on each one of these um, bars. So it's doing the first finger and the little finger. Bar seven, so we're going from fret six, we're gonna use our second finger to fret seven with our third finger. So make sure you don't use your first and second fingers, we're trying to develop the different fingers, so second finger to the third finger. I always find that one a little bit hard. And again, it's good, um, good technique to, or good um, practice to practice with a metronome, doing it in time, uh, building the speed up uh, until you get really fast. Uh, bar number eight, we're gonna use our second finger on fret six and little finger on fret eight. Just hammer-ons and pull-offs. Again, spend a good couple of minutes on that one. You can just pause the video and practice along with each of these. And then the last one, bar nine, is probably the trickiest one. So your third finger on fret seven and little finger on fret eight, hammering on and pulling off with the little finger. So for me, it's the hardest one. The little finger is always gonna be the weakest, so. But you will notice a difference using the little finger with like, say the first finger, and then the second finger and then third finger. Um, it, it feels different going from different fingers. So that's my uh, legato exercises. Um, I've also done a separate video, I'll leave a card above, um, for like, I've done a video of 10 legato exercise workout. That's a really good one if you really want to improve your legato playing. Exercise three is to help improve your crossing of the strings uh, with the plectrum, like the picking. Uh, one of the hardest things to do is do alternate picking, jumping like the strings. So I've just done this little exercise, this one bar, sounds like this slowly. Sounds quite a simple exercise, but it's tricky with the right hand, so. So we're gonna play E5, then A7, and then D7. I'm using my first, third, and fourth fingers, like a power chord. And the pick direction goes down, then up on the A, then down on the D. She goes. We then take it down two frets. So your first finger is E3, third finger is A5, little finger on D5. And you're gonna start with an upstroke on the E, down on the A, then upstroke on the D string. So up, down, up. So from the beginning you've got. We then go down a string, play A3, D5, and then G5. It's gonna go down, up, down. Then move up two frets, and we've got A5, D7, and G7. It's gonna go up, down, up. So it's constantly changing pick direction, but you're jumping over strings, so it makes it quite tricky. So slowly, you've got this. Gradually build up the speed. It gets really tricky. Obviously, only build it up really, really slowly over time. So that's a, a good, real quick little exercise, but helps develop that right hand cross picking. Exercise number four is just the major scale, playing up and down. Um, but people often overlook the scales and major scales. Pretty much everything that you play is based around a major scale. Even if it's in a minor key, it's the same order of notes, just starting in different places. So it's really important to get the major scale completely under your fingers, so you don't even have to think about it. You can't even make a mistake. Uh, watch this, I'll probably make a mistake as I'm playing now. But ideally, you wanna get so your fingers just naturally go through this scale. Okay, so the major scale, I've just written it in A major. Obviously, you can play in every key. So we're gonna start with our second finger on E5. Important to start with your second finger, then your little finger on E7. First finger, A4. Second finger on A5. Little finger, again, on A7. So, so far, you've got. Onto the D string, and you're gonna go D4 with your first finger. D6 with your third finger, and then D7 with your little finger. So the first bar of that. Be quite a good idea to use alternate picking for this. 
On to the next bar, bar 12, we're going to put our first finger on G4, third finger G6, little finger on G7, then on the B string we're just going to start with our second finger on B5, then the little finger on B7, then onto the E string we've got first finger E4, second finger E5, little finger on E7, uh, and the root note, the finished note, is actually on the second finger on E5. That's the root note. So if you're just going to go up, when you hit that E7, finish on the E5. So let's just play that from the beginning of that line you've got. So from bar 13, it's descending the same notes, just going in reverse order. And again, play it with a metronome, gradually build up your speed, play the scale straight up and down, and then just improvise, free improvise with it, or put a backing track on and improvise using that scale. Just get used to playing that so you know it inside and out. And exercise number five, this is all about trying to develop the speed for like playing your pentatonic scales. Um, I've done quite a few videos on pentatonic scales. Uh, I've done, if you don't know what a pentatonic scale um, is, then I've done a separate video, I'll leave a card above for really understanding the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, let's get on to these exercises. Bar 15, um, it's all about trying to develop your right hand jumping uh, from string to string uh, and the left hand movement as well. Okay, the first one goes like this. All we're doing is going E8, little finger, E5 with the first finger, and then B8 with the little finger, then B5 with the first finger. So you've got down, up, down, up. And it does that twice in a bar. So. But basically it's that, those four notes, just repeating pattern. And it's a tricky one to play fast. Uh, I'm using my little finger, you could use your third finger as well. And then you could practice it on each set um, of two strings going up the pentatonic scale. So it would then go B8 to B5 and then G7 to G5. Then you go on the next set of strings. You get the idea. Um, the next exercise, exercise 16, is basically the same, but we're starting in a different place. And what that does is it changes the pick direction when we're jumping from one string to the next. So we're going to start on E5 with the f uh, first finger. Then B8 will be an upstroke. Then B5 with the first finger is a downstroke. Then little finger on E8. So the first four notes go. So it's basically doing the same thing, but we're just starting one note lot on the second note, really, compared to bar 15. So you get this. So same idea, but the pick direction is just um, completely different because we're starting in a different place. Uh, and it will feel different. It, you'll find, perhaps you might far find bar 15 easier, you might find bar 16 easier, even though we're kind of playing the same order of notes. So bar 16 sounds like this. You get the idea? Now, bar 17, we're going to go ascending, going upwards. So we're going to go B5, B8, E5, E8. And you just keep practicing this with the metronome. Always start slow so you can it feels easy and then gradually build the speed up so you don't have to think about it, you're just playing it. Um, and then bar 18 is the same idea as that but we're starting with the little finger on B8, then E5, E8, then B5. 
So we've got when you put it round it goes Um, and then obviously do it on all the different sets of strings up the minor pentatonic scale uh, and build up your speed. If you're wanting some more like easy pentatonic licks, I've done a separate video, seven easy pentatonic licks. I'll leave a card and a link to that in the description. Go and check that out if you want some easy ideas to play on your pentatonic scale. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little video and found it useful. If you have, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, give me a like on the video, the thumbs up, Press that notification as well so you can hear when my new videos come out. I've done over 2,000 videos, so go and check some of those out. Um, I love to hear from you. I do read every single comment, so please leave me some comments in the comment section. Uh, give me some ideas for videos. Let me know where in the world you're from. And if you love what I'm doing, you want to support me, support the channel, and you want to print the tabs off for this and loads of other tabs of stuff, then uh, you can support me on Patreon. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching this. I do really appreciate it. I've been Andy Hillier, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.